COVID epidemic has created more than physical problems. It has also led to an increase in mental issues. Today, local community leaders had the first meeting of a group whose mission is to help prevent deaths from suicides, drug overdoses, and chronic alcoholism. Cheryl Whitkey, executive director of the Safe Communities Madison Dane County, is a member of the Ending Deaths from Despair Coalition, as it's called, and joins us today. Cheryl, thanks for being with us today. Hi, Cheryl. Good to see you. Hi, thanks for having me. Deaths from despair is an actual term. Describe that for us. It is. So the researchers from Princeton, Case and Deaton, uh, looked at mortality data and see that uh, increases in suicide, opioid overdose, and chronic alcoholism is actually driving a, a um, reduction in life expectancy among American citizens. Wow. The, you know, the pandemic has put just an overwhelming strain on so many people in our community and it's been especially challenging for those struggling with mental illness and addiction. So what is the group trying to accomplish and help with that? Yeah, first of all, I really want to thank the Dane County Executive and Dane County uh, Joe Parisi for convening this group. I think it's really powerful. So what we want to do is bring all hands on deck and address this issue. So we know that everybody from the criminal justice system to the healthcare system, schools, um, businesses, you know, large employers, everybody has a role to play to educate folks about how to prevent these deaths from despair. So who all was meeting, who all attended the meeting today? What groups? Uh, we had uh, our OWI court judge, we had um, behavioral health leaders from the healthcare systems, journey mental health, psychiatrists, law enforcement, first responders, um, advocates for people with mental illness like NAMI, um, outreach, people representing the African American and Latino communities, all you know sort of have a, a role to play in this. Well, that must have been an incredible meeting. I mean, I can't imagine how inspiring and reassuring it must be to see everyone in the community playing a role in this and taking part in this. Exactly, and really there's a lot we can do. I, th I think that's the message we want to deliver. There's a lot of hope. There's there's a lot of ways that, that we as individual citizens and as, you know, leaders of our organizations can help. And so that's what we're working on. And you say this for the first time in decades that the death rate has actually gone down in the United States? Yeah, gone up. Uh, I mean, gone up, I mean, sorry. Yeah, so, we're, so um, the research is showing that that actually the life expectancy, you know, we, we knew, I mean, ever since the beginning, ever since in the, in the 20th century, we saw tremendous gains in life expectancy, right? And, and now we're seeing a, a trend downward because of these deaths from despair. Are, th are there any strategies that came out of that meeting that you can share with people? So many people uh, have friends or family who are struggling with suicide, drug overdose, and alcoholism, the three topics that you focused on today. What strategies could you share that, that might be able to help? Yeah, so I mean, one thing is just, you know, paying attention to the people that are in our lives. You know, are you seeing a change in behavior? Are there's, there's sleep patterns changing? Are they, are they becoming sort of more agitated, more aggressive, more depressed? Um, oftentimes people will say, you know, they're thinking, of, they're thinking about killing themselves. They start giving away valuable objects, that sort of thing. And, and sometimes we're afraid to ask, you know, are you thinking about killing yourself? And that's really what we need to do. We're not going to plant a seed. Um, we're, we're really going to say, hey, I care about you. I'm seeing these behaviors and, and let's get you help. And we have training. There's lots of organizations that do training. We do training that, that teach each of us how to, to sort of phrase those questions. The other thing is we have recovery coaches. We have people, we have support groups that basically are available to anybody who's struggling. And so that's part of what we want to do with this group is you know, is basically promote those. And finally, we want to make sure that the that the environment is safe. So we have partnerships with the gun shops that the gun shops will store your guns. If you know, if you're concerned about a loved one who is a gun owner and is maybe, you know, dealing with a fit of depression. So let's get those guns out of the house for the time being. There's people who want to help with that. So lots of strategies. A lot of help out there. People have to realize that if there if you see someone in trouble, what's the first thing you should do? I think the first thing is how are you and then and then you listen you know how are you doing what's going on in your life and a lot of listening and um, you know not judging not not saying you know oh you've, you've really got it so great you know you've got a lot going on in your life 
just just listen and then if if you really start getting alarmed then work with the person collaborate with the person to come up with a plan for how to receive help and i think that's that's you know you think about what a relief it is for somebody to say hey i really care about you i really want to help you you're important to me and um and then to listen good advice cheryl yeah, thanks for being with advice. us today cheryl great to see you thanks for joining us today thanks so much for helping us spread the word about this we you appreciate bet. it you're welcome